And then to close out, I want to talk about two things that are relative to the sport of fighting, and that would be boxing and MMA. And the first one I'll get into will be Canelo Alvarez, who won on Saturday night against Caleb Plant. He now has unified all four titles in the super middleweight division, which now begs the question, and when you look at the record of 57, 1, and 2, with, what is it, 39 knockouts, I believe he has, throughout his career. Now, when we look at the history of boxing, and we look at the great fighters, as much as I've been disconnected with the sport, and as much as I have not followed it the way I should and why, only because the sport has become just an abomination. It's an absolute joke. It's a far cry from what it once was. And as much as I tip my cap off to Alvarez and what he's done for his career, and rightfully so, his record is his record. And I get you could say for someone like Floyd Mayweather, who's been perfect, and we could question a lot of different fights and things of that nature, as I could do for Alvarez too. But it's going to be tough for me to sit here and say, because A, I haven't watched a ton of his fights. B, I haven't followed the sport as I follow from afar. But you may have to consider... Canelo Alvarez to be ranked among the top fighters of all time. And again, you're asking the wrong person as far as being that guy that's watched fight after fight, knows the ins and outs, ups and downs, etc. Because a lot of the track record that he's had over the years, and you could even go as far back as Shane Mosley. Now, we could dissect each of these fights and dissect each of these fighters that he's had, and you could say, oh, this guy was past his prime. Oh, he's, this guy wasn't the same. All right, we can look at even the fights that he had with Triple G, Golovkin, where a lot of people think that there could be another fight on the horizon, which I don't know if people want to see or don't want to see. Maybe they say, ah, I've seen that movie a couple times. I don't need to see it again. Or if you want to look at even the Mayweather fight. And that was a highly anticipated bout going in, but coming out, it wasn't one that you're going to write home about to think that, wow, that was one of the best fights I've seen of all time. Same for Amir Khan. Same for Miguel Cotto, which was way well past his prime. I mean, we could talk about all these different fights. And yes, his record is what his record is. And yes, we could say that he does belong there considering the longevity, considering the record, etc. But if I'm going to rank him, and if I'm going to take a look at the career, and I know and understand I can't compare him to other fighters and other eras, it's unfair. You can't. And you can't even think to say if Canelo Alvarez were to fight someone like Roberto Duran or Marvin Hagler. As much as we could talk about, oh, what would happen? And listen, I got my own bias. You know who I would root for or who I would think would win in a fight. But it's Mindless and senseless. But to me, he's not going to rank up with those guys. So if you're going to look at middleweights all time, and we understand he's in separate classes and he's won different belts, different divisions, I get that. But if you're going to look at him as a middleweight, and in this case, super middleweight, he's going to be, if in that top 10, I would think he's going to be more in the middle toward the bottom of that. Because how he's going to crack those top five is beyond me. How does he do it? There's no way that I think that if I'm going to look at a middleweight and take a look at someone like Marvin Hagler or someone like, as I mentioned, Roberto Duran, or you even want to, you even go further back, you know, 70s. You even want to go, for, and we understand if you're going back to the 50s and all that, it's more heavyweights. People are going to look at the, Muhammad Ali's, the Joe Lewis's, the Rocky Marciano's. I would get that. But unless I go back on YouTube and look at all his fights and really quantify on whether or not he belongs, let's say, top three or top five, maybe he'll be fifth. And maybe I should get a boxing historian to talk about it. But you fight who you fight, and I get it. But it's not really an impressive list. Yeah, maybe some of the names stick out and some of the ones that you've come to know and love or have watched through the years of being Hall of Fame fighters, but we all know those fights weren't in the middle of their primes. 
that Alvarez caught these guys at the end. And I get in the last 20 years, you could say that about a lot of guys. And 57, 1 and 2, 39 knockouts is impressive. Without a doubt. But just because that's his record, am I going to already quantify him as being one of the top fighters of all time or the top fighters in his class of all time based on his record? I can't say that. And I know that that's going to be a debate for a lot of the diehard boxing fans to say, Jay Reels, you haven't watched, you haven't paid attention. And you know what? That's why. Hands up, understood. But I do follow the sport enough, and I follow some of the big fighters enough to think that, okay, he beat this guy, he beat, all right, wow, that was impressive, whatever. Uh, is it still enough to crack that top five when we look at the whole resume and compare him to some of the other guys that preceded him? That's the beauty of debating these type of issues and these type of arguments. And me being the old guy get off my lawn, uh-uh. He's not going to crack that list. And maybe I need to have somebody talk to me or maybe even be a little, I don't want to say combative, but to debate that and have a serious debate on whether or not he belongs as that all-time great to be one of those top two, three, four, five, five fighters of all time. That's what I'm trying to say.